Welcome back, listeners. Welcome to a brand new episode of Real Talk About Feminism podcast. We are wearing our Valentine's glasses today because it's almost Valentine's Day. It's almost Valentine's Day. So um, we're not going to wear them the full episode. No, because it's kind of hard to see. It is kind of hard to see. But they're really cute. And we're just hoping you all have a great Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day. Whether you're single, in a relationship, it doesn't matter. It's for everyone. Exactly. You know, this is actually the first Valentine's Day. I'm like not with someone. (gasps) Wow. Well, you should. I took myself on a date. Last well, year. I'll be working. Oh. And like honestly, I don't really care. Yeah. But and like I'm hanging out with friends and stuff. It's like I Well, it was I a, don't need someone. It wasn't no, you don't need someone, but it was like a really big thing for me last year on Valentine's Day to go. I took myself to a sit-down sushi restaurant and I had to get over like everyone staring at me because it looked like I got stood up on Valentine's mm-hmm. Day. And it's like all couples, but like I did it for myself. I had so much fun. I'm proud of you because it does look like that and you Mm -hmm. go into it knowing that, but who cares what other people think? And I was like trying not to just sit on my phone. Like I was like, I'm going to be in my thoughts. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like if you are single, like I would recommend taking yourself out on a date. You don't have to like go to a sit down restaurant, but like go and do something on your own and just celebrate yourself because it really is like it was really empowering. I love that. I've been better at doing stuff myself. Like I've gone to eat a couple times alone Mm -hmm. and it is like kind of weird because like society is like you have to have someone Mm -hmm. you know like that's what everybody does you go out to eat with people but it was fine I just watched TikTok I was by myself eating food that I really liked and it was fine yeah it was actually really fun yeah no it is it's fun yeah it's like fun to do stuff by yourself sometimes yeah yeah so happy (laughs) almost Valentine's Day everybody be safe and have a good time yes but yeah, other than that, um, obsessions. My obsession is Schitt's Creek. Love that show. Since so I, iconic. Yes, it's iconic. And since I can't start a new show and I can only rewatch shows, <laughs> um, this one is the next in the round. So it's been my like show that I fall asleep to as well if I'm sleeping by myself. Um, and I don't like restart like the next morning. I can't do that. I know that people can't do that, but like I've already seen the whole show twice. I know. And even with shows like that, I have to restart. I and I don't fall asleep to shows. I fall asleep to Disney movies because I can't do that. Yeah. I don't know. I just like falling asleep to something familiar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But <laughs> I need the Disney comfort movies. of the cast that I know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm rewatching right now. And it's just so funny. And it's so good so good and it's not too long either no they're 20 minute episodes yeah there's not like a billion seasons it's just funny family yeah remember when i was alexis last year for halloween yeah two years ago now two years and i did my dance i was going through my tiktok yesterday because i was so bored at work and i was like making videos private i was like why did i ever post that that one i left i was like that was actually really good it was funny (laughs) no that was good yeah it was good i was impressed thank you what's your obsession my obsession is the drink poppy and i've mentioned olipop before but i'm obsessed with poppy right now it has prebiotics in it it's like better for you than soda and it's like my drinky drink Mm -hmm. and i love just like reading or watching netflix and having a poppy yeah i have one here you have one here she's shining in her glory (laughs) i unfortunately cannot have uh prebiotics or probiotics like anything with that in it so really yeah, like the it's like the fermentation of it. Oh, okay, that makes so, sense. So like I couldn't have a soda or like that yogurt this morning. That yeah. made me sick. Like I can't have that. But I like to smell it. <laughs> no, that that sounds really weird, but like I've always been like a girl who like if I'm not hungry but I like I want a taste of something, I'll just smell it and like that's good enough for me. It's like how good is it to smell? I can't smell eat it, this, though. but how good is it to smell? <laughs> no, but honestly, like I've always been like that. Yeah. So um, weird because I've never thought that about you but really no kidding. no I've, oh, you're like you are making this up right now no I really have been like that but like I asked you to smell your last poppy mm-hmm. so yeah it's like yeah sure anyways yeah poppy sponsor us please for a healthy gut for a healthy gut <laughs> okay so today's feminist highlight is Barbara McIntock wait hold on oh okay I just had an idea <laughs> Next episode, I want to do the feminist highlight. Okay. Can I? <laughs> sure. Okay. I'm going to be with the feminist highlight next week, guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. In the history of the podcast, Haley has never done the I've feminist highlight. I've never done the feminist highlight. So. All right. Well, um, 
listen and learn. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm an expert now. <laughs> Taking notes. Today's highlight is Barbara McIntock. She was the Nobel P- – okay. I said listen and learn. Makes a mistake. <laughs> Um, she was the Nobel Prize winner in physiology or medicine in 1983. She was a scientist and cytogeneticist. I don't know how to say this. No, it's geneticist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was a scientist and cytogeneticist. Geneticist. Okay. <laughs> Growing up, her family had very little money and she was just expected to marry rich. Oh. But Barbara studied corn's hereditary characteristics, for example, the different colors of its kernels. She studied how these characteristics are passed down through generations and linked this to changes in the plant's chromosomes. During the 1940s and 50s, she proved that genetic elements can sometimes change position on a chromosome and that this causes nearby genes to become active or inactive. So she made a huge discovery. She never married. She chose to devote her life to research instead. She was shy and anything but a careerist, but at the same time, she also realized the importance of what she had achieved, not least of all in her role as an example for other women. And that information was from NobelPrize.org. And there's a bit more on there if you want to check it out. I'll put it in the show notes. But I just think it was so interesting that like her family was like, nope, you're going to marry rich because we're poor and you're a woman and that's just what you do. Yeah. But instead, she like seriously like worked her butt off and made this huge scientific discovery. That is really crazy. Honestly, like, okay, what she did was amazing. But do you ever think, like, how do you get into, like, studying the genetics of corn? I don't know. And, like, she obviously, like, went to school. And, like, this was, like, a development over years and years. Like, I just gave a short summary. But, yeah, I wonder. Like, yeah, do you ever think, like, how do you get so specific in, like, your studies? Like, "Mm, I'm choosing corn. I'm choosing (laughs) corn. (laughs) That is really cool, though. Good for her. Because that is really hard, especially, like, if that's the way – well, this relates to purity culture. If that's the way you were taught growing up, like you're going to marry rich. This is what you're going to do. You're going to help the family by, you know, marrying rich so we can have money. And then she goes against that. Like, that's really hard. Yeah. And she never married. I'm like, that's really interesting, especially like in that time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Good for her. So let's talk about our sexual trauma from (laughs) purity culture. (laughs) So trigger warning, we are like, I mean, by the title, if anything is triggering, like sexually, Hopefully you're not listening right now, but, um, yeah, we are going to be talking about like sex and like, like sexual repression. Yeah. Stuff like that. Everything with purity culture. So if you are family, you might not want to listen because we are going to be getting specific. This is your warning. You cannot judge us if you're listening. If you we continue, have full immunity right now. <laughs> yes. If you continue past this point, you cannot say anything to us. So let's get into it let's get into it so if you grew up like us you definitely know what purity culture is but and some people might not no we'll we'll explain what it is but like if you grew up religiously because this isn't just like mormonism it's like christianity, christianity. catholicism yeah. like um is islam i dated a muslim guy and i don't even know the. <laughs> i think it's islam <laughs> yeah like muslim um like this is just like growing up religious yeah for a lot of people So purity culture is basically um, being told as a girl, like from a young age, that your virginity is sacred and that basically like anything sexual before marriage is a sin. Mm -hmm. And there's like firm boundaries on like what that means. Yeah. Well, yeah, there are. Um, It's very gendered, definitely leaning more on one side. And we have very specific examples that we can get into, but like immediately, I think about how Tyler grew up Catholic. And I asked him this one time, I was like, Did you grow up like being told like you can't, you shouldn't have sex before marriage? And he was like, No, not really. But like it was never like encouraged, but like it wasn't like the Catholic belief of like do not have sex before marriage. Mm -hmm. And I fully believe that's because he's a man, Mm -hmm. because I'm sure that the girls who went to his church like grew up well and one of my friends from high school like she wore a purity ring all through high school yeah so it's like it's very obvious that it is like for women. very targeted for women yeah yes and like as a girl like you're told you, your virginity is so sacred and like now I'm like questioning like what do I believe about virginity I'm like because some people think it's just like a social construct I'm like I don't know like how I feel about virginity now because I'm trying to like, work through all this stuff. Yeah. But it is interesting that, like, it's treated as, like, such a huge monumental thing. Yeah. When you're young. The weird thing to me about that is that, like, it is something that, like, you know 
growing up, at least we can speak from like the Christian standpoint Mm -hmm. or like the Mormon standpoint, but like growing up, like it, you know, do not have sex before marriage or you can't go. Or like don't put yourself in a situation where you could. And it is so weird to me that like the, the virginity of like young girls is so important to this male like led church. Like it's just very like, it's so icky. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird because. I, I was like, I was going to say, I'm not going to get into it, but we're getting into it. Yeah, we're getting into it. Like now I'm like, really, you know what it never was that serious. <laughs> like, it's it never just, that serious. It was never like that serious. And that's like, for me personally, like looking back, I'm like, why were we like so told so many times? Like, it's so bad to have sex, like outside of marriage. Mm-hmm. And it was only girls. And it's that stereotype of the boys are playing basketball and the girls are sewing and having a lesson about purity. Yeah. Like that's so real. And we lived through that. Yeah. And I mean, they did teach boys not to have sex before marriage too, but like. In I'm Mormonism sure for sure. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure their conversations were way different than ours. Way different. And there's different expectations. Like yeah. it's not as frowned upon. No. So kind of a specific example of like how it's really put on women and I think that men in like religious men are conditioned to believe that it is more put on women because like in society we're bu- like taught well okay growing up we were taught like oh men just can't control themselves yeah not in the way of like justifying like rape or sexual assault but like men just can't control themselves like if your bralette strap is showing that's like, why we lazy. have to dress modestly yeah, for the men for the men so like growing up like that's obviously put on us like to protect the men. And so I feel like they, the men in religions are conditioned to believe, like, oh, like, I, it's just part of my DNA. Like, I just can't control it. But girls can. Like, there's no way that girls can be sexual. So if they are, then it's a sin. Right. That whole thing about, like, girls, like, don't get horny or, like, aren't sexual at all. Like, that's so false. Mm-hmm. And I want to, like, bring it back to, like, how it's targeted towards women. Like, the whole saving yourself for your husband thing. Yeah. You never hear that about men. Yeah, like, save, save yourself, save yourself for, your, for your, wife. your future wife. No, you never hear that about about that yeah that is really true so there's so many points like going on in my head right now I want to talk about like the gendered thing and how like I really do think like the men religious men are conditioned to believe it's like the women's fault Mm -hmm. um when I was in high school I was like pretty into the Mormon church and so was my boyfriend at the time and like I would say we were like pretty religious for like teenagers But also, like, the issue with purity culture is, like, everyone's going to find a way around it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, teenagers are, like, horny and they're going to do something about it. And so this is the point where if you're listening, family, please don't. (laughs) Um, But, like, you know, like, in high school, like, we, me and my high school boyfriend, like, did some things. Like, we never went past, like, hands, to Mm -hmm. be honest. But, like that was like against the rules like major against the major against the rules and so he ended up going on a church mission and then he like when he was first there it was like his first email to me he emails me and he goes um you need to go to the bishop and repent for your sins didn't say our sins no it was my sins dude and like I literally went to the bishop and I like confessed like I did did this yes I did this because he was telling me that I needed to. And, like, I trusted him. Mm-hmm. And so – and he was, like, on a mission. Like, I was, like, he's doing what God wants him to do. Like, I need to listen. Mm-hmm. But I remember being annoyed. That's, like, so manipulative. No, it really is. So, like, I went and I sat in a room. I was 17 mm-hmm. or 16 at that 16. point. I was 16. I sat in a room alone with an older man. I trusted this bishop. Like, he was really great. But, like, and then I, like, told him, like, sexual things that I did. And that is so creepy to me. Like, you think of, like, even, like, the Catholic Church, like, the confessionals and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, just, like, telling someone. I understand the idea of it. But, like, there is no reason why you need to, like, go into detail to, like, repent. Like, if you really believe that you made a sin, if I had believed I had made a sin by doing that in high school – I that's between me and God. Exactly. I was just going to say an older man. That's your personal relationship with God. Yeah. And that can be worked out between the two of you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like that, that's a really relevant example to me of like how 
people who are really into the into religion, I really think like the men, they really don't think they have any fault. Mm-hmm. It's like all put on women. And he literally told me, you need to go repent. And I didn't question it because he was a man and he like had this authority over me because right. he held like certain magical powers. But <laughs> so that was just like a really specific example. Yeah. I think it illustrates though, like the point we're trying to make because it's so true. It's like you if the roles were reversed would you ever have emailed him and said you need to repent for your sins no no because that's not your place and also you it takes two okay yeah. and also if you are on a church mission like he should have taken care of that before you yeah, know what i mean exactly that's what they're told to do yeah <sighs> yeah there's a lot of issues with it but and even like if i was in the, if the roles were reversed mm-hmm. i might have said like hey like i repented for this thing like Maybe you want to think about it too, but I wouldn't have even said that. No, like, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, that's so interesting. I straight up lied about all of my, <laughs> like when I would go in for like my temple interviews mm-hmm. and it, it was uncomfortable when they asked, have you committed any sex? Have you broken the law of chastity? Yeah. That was the phrasing. No, it's uncomfortable. I'm not going to talk about that with you. No matter how much I trust you. It's well, uncomfortable. I definitely lied about it too. Yeah. But that was the one moment where I didn't lie because he told me that I needed to. And there's like so much pressure to like go talk to the bishop. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Like I can remember like when I like quote committed sexual sins in high school and I'd be like, oh my gosh, like I need to go talk to the bishop. And like there's anonymity, like mom and dad would never know, but Mm -hmm. like I need to go do it. And there's like so much guilt on yourself for what? Yeah. Yeah, For what? And like, okay, if that's how they want to do it, like, can I go talk to my female leader? Exactly. Because we've got multiple of them and we trust them more. Yeah. Like any of the like young women's presidents that I was with, I would have I would have been way more comfortable with that. Yeah. Like <laughs> I would have been fine, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just like there's so much shame around it, around anything sexual. And there's also like, okay, for example, like we were like pretty religious in high school, me and my boyfriend at the time. And we still did something Mm -hmm. because it's going to happen. And so that's the thing. Like, that's the issue with purity culture because, like, it's not talked about. So, like, there could be issues with, like, STDs, STIs, getting pregnant, like, all of those consequences because it's just not talked about and it's very shamed. Mm -hmm. So, number one, there's that. And also, like, people are going to do stuff anyways. Right. Like, people are going to anyways. Yeah. Because we've all been teenagers and that's what happens. Because you're young and you're curious and you're trying to, like, explore yourself and find mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah. And it's a natural thing. Yeah. Also, I want to preface, like, I'm not condoning, like, having sex and when you're, like, young because yeah. there's a lot of mm, – there's a lot of issues that can come with, like, having sex at a young age. Yeah. I'm thinking, like, mostly emotionally. Yeah. Because it's a big deal. Like, I'm it not is. trying to downplay, like, sex is, like, nothing. No, it's a huge thing. Mm-hmm. And and we both agree on that. We both agree on that. And that's something that, like, where I'm at right now, like, figuring that out for myself. Because when you're young, like, you just know about sex, like, what your parents and your community tell you about sex. Yeah. So I don't want to downplay, like, that sex is, like, not important at all. Or, like, losing your virginity. Like, right. it, it's all, like, a really big deal. And I, like, I also, like, um... Like, I don't think it's that healthy to have a sex at, like, a super young age because it, it can cause issues and stuff. So I'm also not, like, being like, oh, my gosh, you're you're 14. Go and do it. You yeah. Know? Like, no. 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 By you're a kid. no means am I doing that. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there like, there's a lot of issues with purity culture. And there's a way that you can teach, like, you shouldn't have sex until you're mature, you know? Like, you, there's a way you can teach, like, being safe. Mm-hmm. without like shaming everyone for doing anything remotely sexual you know right it's there is hard, a way but... it is very hard because I feel like that's what they try and do like in sex ed in high school like a very objective view of like yeah use protection like wait until you're ready like that kind of stuff and it is hard because like people are going to do it if they want to but the whole thing about purity culture is like all the guilt and shame that's associated with it, like from such a young age. And that does so much damage. Yeah. Because when you're older and you're like, like me, like I'm like, what does sex mean to me? Like I am like figuring that out, even though like I literally was married and like, yeah, I've like been in relationships, you know, like I'm like still figuring what that means for me because from such a young age, we were told it was one thing. Yeah. And we were told like sex is so bad and then you're married and, and it's then fine. it's good. 
Yeah. And like you want to have sex when you're married, but when you're bad, like, no, like that's not, you shouldn't have those feelings when you're not married. Something that I think is really important. And this is something that like I am trying to deconstruct right now. And I was actually watching a video about this earlier is like sex is not defined as one thing. Right. And that's the thing. Like if you define sex as like a penis going into a vagina, that's not sex that's not the only way to have sex Mm -hmm. like if you think of like same-sex couples or um, oral yeah or or like there's other ways so like for me it's like confusing because I'm like what even is like losing your virginity right because two a man and a woman cannot lose their virginity the same way two women together can right you know what I'm saying yeah like in if you're going off that definition Mm yes so that's like another thing that I like think is not necessarily like damaging but kind of because like sex is not just like okay this is something that I noticed like when I lost my virginity like it was something that was the biggest deal in the world like that I was taught all growing up like Mm -hmm. at church at school because I was going to a religious school like Mm -hmm. everything was like do not have sex until you're married you'll like it's up on the same level as like committing murder like that is the same like sin level yeah and so like then I actually had sex and I was like okay like I'm not any different you know right exactly yeah that's when I was talking about like it being a social construct like the virginity thing yeah it's just very interesting I actually like wrote a paper about purity culture for my love and sex class last semester but I talked about this how like it's like so built up that like losing your virginity is such a big deal and it's you're not any different as a person Mm -mm. you're not bad like you didn't do anything bad again if you're in high school please like (laughs) yeah it's different but like you're not bad for like having sex like that's a normal human thing that's a normal human experience and it's normal to like want to have sex Mm -hmm. but something that I think is so damaging is like we are taught there's one way to have sex Mm -hmm. and that includes a man and a woman yeah and it's so damaging to people who don't fit in that category and don't enjoy having sex that way Mm -hmm. and are gay Yeah. It's because you grow up and you're taught, like, literally you're going to hell if you are gay and have sex and Mm -hmm. you give into those, quote, desires. Yeah. Like, it's such a shameful thing. And it does so much damage for kids who grow up religiously under purity culture and then are like, wait, I don't fit into, like, the straight category Yeah, where, like, I'm not attracted to a man. Like, why is that the only thing we're taught? But then, like, I can't be truly myself because – that doesn't go along with what sex is. Yeah. It's very damaging. And I think it leads to so many issues of like trying to find yourself, Mm -hmm. but also like being stuck under that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that is a really important point because there really is, in my opinion, there's not one definition of sex. To me, there is not one definition of sex. So I do think that that, that's a very damaging point of purity culture, like you were saying. Because it just causes a lot of issues for people who don't fit into that box. But right. again, that's not really okay in religion if you don't fit into that box of, like, being straight. So, mm-hmm. And that's part of the reason, like, I struggled in church growing up because I'm, like, it's supposed to be all-inclusive and it's not at all. Yeah. So that was, like, a huge point for me. Mm-hmm. Um, another point that's, like, so damaging is, like, female pleasure. That is yes. not talked about. In fact, like, you know what? Come to think of it, like, the the discussion about, like, masturbation and self-pleasure was always targeted towards men. Yeah. But, like, never about women. Yeah, like, women could never have those desires. It's like women, like, can't have an orgasm yeah. or something. It's just very interesting. But, like, that is also so damaging, like, when you're taught basically that, like, sex is just for men. Mm-hmm. And it's not true. It is really damaging because it, it leads to, like, very unhealthy sex. Um, So – like I said, like, when I had sex for the first time, like, I was, like, okay, because it lasted, like, two minutes. Yeah. There was no, like, Boring. no question about, like, if I wanted anything, like, nothing but the act of, like, sex. Yeah. Even though I just said, like, there's no, there's more than one definition of sex, but, like, you know, intercourse. And, um... Like, to me, like, I didn't really think anything of it. Like, I just kind of thought it was normal. I talked about this on, like, my sexual assault healing episode. But, like, I just got my first vibrator, like, probably, or, like, five months ago when I started dating Tyler. 
And, like, I just, like, didn't really think, like, my pleasure was a priority. But, like, I also didn't think anything of it. Like, I wasn't right. like, oh, like, like it was just like, oh, like, just this like, is what it sex. is. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't realize that, like, it's not okay for the man to be the only one that experiences pleasure out of it until Tyler. Mm-hmm. And so, like, that's really damaging because, like, sex is, like, for me, it's, like, very emotional. It's, like, a very connecting thing. Mm -hmm. And so then to have someone, like, not care about your feelings at all, like, that's damaging. But I just thought it was normal, you know? Right. Because it's never explained, really. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, it's really taboo, honestly. It really is. Um, I was, like, really lucky because when I lost my virginity with, like, my then boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So weird. Now I haven't called him my boyfriend in years. but um. He was, like, so good about it. Like, I never even brought anything up, but, like, he just went for it. Yeah. And so, like, I never, like, had that struggle. And he's actually the one that, like, bought me my first vibrator. Wow. Yeah. I don't think I ever told you that. But, like, he's the one, like, he, like, surprised me with it one day and was, like, hey, like, you were saying, like, you want to spice things up? Like, I wow. I bought this for you and I was like, wow, like green flag for you. Yeah, literally. Um, but like, yeah, like he like made me feel like really I was like so nervous about yeah. it because I was like, toys, like, no, 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 like that's taboo too. Like, yeah, no, like no toys. I've never done that. Like, I don't know what to do. But like he like helped me with it. Like he was like so good about it. So like I was yeah. really lucky with that. And that like made me comfortable like using it on my like myself. Yeah. But yeah, so that's very interesting because like that was, like, so evident to me that I was, like, oh, my gosh, like, I can, like, see the effects of this because yeah. you just, like, don't talk about how sex can be, like, so fun and pleasurable. And mm-hmm. it's not just about, like, making babies and making life. It should be fun. Like, it's something that's normal for for humans, like, in a relationship. Yeah. So. No, I really like that. Yeah. That's a, a kudos to him. Yeah. It is. <laughs> um, Yeah, that's, like, I think that's a, one of the big factors that it creates so much damage like you're just not taught that you can find pleasure out of it Mm -hmm. and like I like mom and dad would tell us like sex is like fun when you're married like Mm -hmm. it should be fun like you should enjoy it but But you're never never like like, you're never like taught how or like why why it could mm -hmm. be fun yeah because it also like is way easier for men to Mm -hmm. like have an orgasm and than it is for women and so like it's also like okay like I'm not taught anything now I'm just finding out like okay like it should be pleasurable for me Mm -hmm. but I am having the hardest time like is there something wrong with me am I you know like it's just Mm -hmm. like so much of a spiral that's like what affects me you know yeah it it is a spiral for sure and I never like in high school like before when I was having sex like before marriage and stuff honestly like I never it was rare if I would like struggle with feeling so guilty where I'm like oh my gosh like I'm such a bad person like I never really had like those intrusive thoughts like that and would like spiral Mm -hmm. but it's like now in the phase of my life like with my vibrator like you know like my sexual life it's like sometimes that creeps in Mm -hmm. and I like have to like work through that in therapy but like before it's just very interesting because like even though I grew up being taught all this I was just like yeah whatever yeah but like now I'm, like, dealing with it more than I was, like, even in high school. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I've never really thought, like, oh, my gosh, I'm such a bad person for doing this. Like, in uh, in high school, like, I did feel guilty. But, like, I've never thought, like, I'm going to hell, you know? Yeah. Like, I never believed that. But, like, I, it has stuck with me so strong that somebody told me that sex before marriage and murder, you get sent to the same place in hell. And no. I was, like, that is not accurate. No. Sorry. No. Like, I never believed that. But it like, literally says that, like, in the Book of Mormon. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? Because I used that quote in my essay. Oh, <laughs> I yes. did. I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. So, I don't know. There's a lot of damages. One, the, Another thing? Yeah. No, I was just going to say, like, there really is a lot mm-hmm. that can happen, like, in your adulthood when you're, like, trying to work through all this stuff. Yeah. Another, like, damaging thing is that it makes it so that there's no conversation no conversation about consent Mm -hmm. it's all the focus on don't have sex before you're married it's never like you shouldn't have sex before you're married and if you do or if someone does something to you or something happens to you that is not your fault like right you need to you need to talk to someone you trust like report you know like there's so much focus on like do not have sex before you're married but then what if you get raped 
And, like, if you were in a place where, like, for me, in high school, like, when I was really into the church, if something happened to me. Then you would think it's your fault. I would think, like, okay, maybe not think it's my fault. Like, I could definitely easily go there. But it would be hard to want to, like, report anything because there's so much shame around it. And the way we grew up, I wouldn't have felt shame about that. But even, like, being out at BYU Idaho when I was assaulted and I was in this like hyper religious environment there was so much shame around anything with sex that even like even though I knew it wasn't my fault and I didn't put myself like you know it nothing was on me and I wasn't going to get kicked out of school for it there was still like shame like reporting it and talking to someone because it's so stigmatized because it's so stigmatized you know Mm -hmm. and it's like okay well now like I feel dirty because like these people that I'm reporting it to which were all men by the way and I tried to petition to for them to be have a woman and they didn't listen to me. Um, but like I feel dirty now because these people know that something happened to me. And at this school, if you do anything sexual, you should be getting kicked out. But like I have done that against my will, you know, and mm-hmm. now I just feel dirty. You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's just there's a lot of like danger in teaching that because there's, if the importance is so put on don't have sex before marriage or you're going to hell and not if something ever happens to you this is what you need to do like it's dangerous it's very dangerous and it's just so uh, it can really create like unhealthy relationships or like the way you see relationships and sex in general Mm -hmm. and like say there's like somebody who like gets married and then their husband like assaults them yeah because you can be sexually assaulted while you're married yeah but, like, you're, like, well, I'm married and, like, this is what I was told about sex. Like, i so this supposed is to enjoy sex with my husband. Yeah. And I've never had sex before because I was told I'd go to hell. And you don't know any difference. Yeah. And so nothing changes because you don't feel like you can go talk to anybody and you definitely can't talk to your husband about it. Yeah. So it's very scary, like, for some women. hmm Yeah. I think – Again, it's hard. Like, I'm not a parent, so I don't even know how I'm going to navigate this. I know. I've thought about it. But there need – I mean, just like in our sex ed for kindergartners episode, the importance should be placed on consent. And especially me, like, I really believe that. I know you do too. Mm -hmm. But, like, I never want my kids to – go. even, like, teaching kids, like, you don't have to hug every relative if you don't feel like it. It starts very basic. Yeah, it's, Mm -hmm. like, basic things like that. Um, like I definitely want to teach that and it, it is hard, but like the main emphasis, emphasis with sex ed should be about safety and should be about consent and making sure everyone feels comfortable because people are going to do stuff anyways. Right. And I also like with the education thing, I just learned from you Mm -hmm. that you're not supposed to use, um, oil-based lube with condoms. Like I just learned that and I'm 22 years old. Yeah. And I've been having sex for years. Like that is bad. Yeah, like there needs to be education. I don't know how I learned that, but I just did. I literally had no idea until I told you. And you're like, Kenzie, you can't do that. And mm-hmm. I was like freaking out. Yeah. But like, how was I supposed to know? Yeah, no, like systems have just failed. Like mm-hmm. there needs to be better education, but yeah, I don't know. There's like so many things about it that we could talk about. Like we definitely should do a part two at some point. Yeah. Because with um, maybe like answering some questions that you guys yeah, have. Yeah, for sure. Like let us know like questions or like things you want us to discuss and like hash out because we both grew up in this. We both lived it. We've had to like work through things like whether it was like minimal or like major mm-hmm. with like sex and relationships in general. And we can give like very specific examples if they mm-hmm. apply. You know? Yeah, for sure. Um, Yeah, I want to – give like a couple like ways to help yourself if Mm -hmm. you've like struggled with this yeah the main one for sure is therapy yeah and even like for me when I said like I never really like struggled with like guilt and shame until like recently like now Mm -hmm. in like varying degrees but like you've got to go work through that you've got to talk about it because also like having those feelings and like not having anyone to talk to about it is like really lonely because you're like what's wrong with me it's also like when something is so deeply ingrained in you there's really no way to like reverse that or like get rid of like the negative side effects of that without talking to someone. Like you have to talk to a therapist. You have to because you're literally if you're if you grew up in purity culture and you're now an adult and you're like actually I don't believe any of that. That was wrong. That was manipulative. 
I don't agree with it. You're deconstructing those beliefs that were ingrained in you yeah. since you were a kid. And so you have to be able to talk through that and work mm-hmm. through it. And then I would say like if it's severe, like having like a certified like sexual trauma therapist or something because it is trauma yeah. on varying degrees. Yeah. So I think going to therapy, having somebody to talk through about it. And then I also think like being okay with like letting go of like some of those preconceived ideas that you had were quote bad about like yourself, whether that be like your sexual orientation or certain kinks you have in the Mm -hmm. bedroom or like things you want to try, like exploring yourself basically, like being okay and giving yourself that grace to find out what you like. You don't have to just do missionary. Nope. Lingerie is not bad. Toys are not Toys bad. Are not Toys bad. are your friend. <laughs> um, yeah, like none of that is bad. It's okay to have fun because like it's a very connecting thing with your partner, at least for me. Mm-hmm. And like you should want to have fun. Like you should want to. <laughs> no, you really should though. Like, yeah. yeah, it is like there's a reason, obviously, like for procreation but like there's a reason we want to have sex because Mm -hmm. it's fun and it is connecting yeah it feels good yeah and for me like a big part of everything has been like taking back my power because like that was something that was like taken away from us like and we were taught not to do and then things happened to me and like you know sexually things were taken away from me and so like after that like that's when I decided like I'm gonna lose my virginity because like I was like it's like if someone is not gonna get in trouble with the school and the church for like putting something on me Mm -hmm. like doing something sexually to me without my consent then they obviously if they don't care about a crime that was committed they obviously shouldn't care that much about me choosing to have sex no and it's like why are they so concerned yeah literally it is so yeah like I decided that and so like for me like it's like learning how to take my power back from like the institution that I feel like repressed our feelings I love that yeah, because from a young age, like, you were in the institution, mm-hmm. growing up with these beliefs, and then you were at an institution where all of that was, like, put against you. Yeah. And, yeah, so I'm, like, if you're not going to get someone in trouble for committing a literal crime, then me going and making a choice, there you cannot get me in trouble for that. I do. Even though your first time sucked, I'm glad you made the choice. It didn't suck, actually. Oh. Like, there was no pleasure, but, like, I felt completely safe, 100%. Yeah, but... But it's not a good time if you don't both finish. <laughs> yeah. You know, like not completely. Yeah. But yeah, like I'm glad you made the choice for yourself. That's exactly. So like that was like the thing. And like I didn't feel guilty afterwards. Like going back to school, like I was obviously lying like because I wasn't well, supposed to be and at school. you weren't the only one. Yeah. Like 50% of the people probably were having sex. Well, actually, I know because I was, I was working at the clinic, the student health center, and there was all I was working in the lab. So I was doing the blood tests and the urine tests. Mm-hmm. And there was like a gonorrhea outbreak. <laughs> like and I remember them talking and being like the doctors being like what are we supposed to do but like they can't they obviously would never like they can't report it's you it's HIPAA and like the doctors were actually cool like the physicians like they didn't yeah. care but yeah I remember them being like oh my gosh like gonorrhea outbreak at BYUI <laughs> what so yeah everyone was doing it but like I never felt guilty after that because I was like I took my power back and I made the choice yeah and every time since then like has been me like making the choice and like figuring out what I like and like that's empowering to me so yeah for sure like it is it feels very empowering yeah. when you like are in charge of your own sexual decisions mm-hmm. and I don't mean that in like I'm not talking about rape and sexual assault mm-hmm. I'm talking about like I want to try this because it looks fun yeah and who cares yeah like we're on a floating rock <laughs> literally okay. and Jesus still loves me <laughs> and Jesus still loves me um the other day like I was like um I'm definitely a pillow princess but the other day I was like a little more assertive Ooh. and I felt like such a baddie but like in that moment I was like okay like yeah I'm like being powerful right now you know yes and Good so yeah I think it, it really is like it's so important to figure it out if you feel shame about it like it is really normal you're not alone you can reach out to us but these things are very real the repercussions of purity culture and growing up in that environment so it's okay to have struggles and it's normal, but yeah. Yeah. The important thing is to find someone to talk to about it and work through it so that you can have a good sex life. Yeah. We want that for all of you. We want that for all of you. Um, If you guys do want us to do a a second episode on this like, I would in love a few to. months, 
Um, we're going to put a poll. Like, if you're listening on Spotify, you can answer the polls. Tell us that you want us to do in another episode. and Or, like, DM us. Like, comment on the post. Whatever you want to do. But if you guys have questions, we could put a question box and get questions to answer for you guys. Because I really do think this is beneficial. I do, too. Or, like, even just, like, can you talk about this? Yeah. It doesn't have to be a question. Yeah. But, like, something that you want us to cover. Because, like, we're speaking from personal experience, but maybe there's something else that we're not thinking about. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed, obviously this is, like, a heavy topic. But, like, if you – I hope that you found – if you can relate, I hope that you found some comfort knowing that we can relate to you, too. Yeah, because we really can. Yeah, we can. <laughs> well, follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Real Talk About Feminism Pod. Subscribe to our weekly email newsletter and our YouTube channel. And rate and review. Share with a friend. And in honor of Valentine's Day, stay super super freaky. freaky. Have Have great great vagina. vagina. I love you. Bye. (laughs) Bye.